Hey folks, welcome to the Tech for All channel. This is a piece of art, I totally love it. That's the DJI Spark that I have recently purchased from China. So yes, I didn't buy it from an official reseller. I decided to go to gearbest.com and buy this drone. So it was both a bumpy and a not so bumpy experience and I would like to share with you what happened so far and to give you seven advices for DJI Spark beginners. Let's go. The experience of buying a DJI Spark from a Chinese online store is not much different than buying it from a local reseller with the big difference that the price could be much more convenient. If you're living in the United States, well, you, you pretty much have no troubles because the DJI Spark Fly More Combo costs about, I think, $700 and that's about the price you can find on most of the Chinese online stores. If you go to Europe, things get a bit more hardcore. We have to pay 800 euros for the Fly Mart combo and translate it into dollars. That's about 950, so yeah, that's, that's quite a lot. So that's how I ended up buying the DJI Spark from gearbest.com and the total amount of money I have spent with the discount code was about 650. I don't quite know how they declared the Spark, uh, but I was lucky to get it without importation fees and it arrived with DHL for just a week. The good part of that is that apparently DJI do not care where you bought the drone from. So as soon as you install the DJI GO V4 app and you try to register the drone for the first time, you're going to get an ad for the DJI Care refresh option and you have 48 hours to purchase that additional coverage. Well, it's, it's a nice thing. It can help you for repairing your drone at a lower price or even get a replacement if you damage it in water, for example. So that's a good thing. I was super excited to get my DJI Spark and I've been going through plenty of tutorials or how-tos or even YouTube videos, but I didn't know how unprepared I am for the real experience. So here are seven quick advices for people that just get their hands on on the DJI Spark. There are two main options you could buy. You can buy the DJI Spark as a standalone drone with just a single battery, a charger and pretty much nothing more. Or you can get the Flymore combo which adds a second battery, a transmitter, nice carrying bag. Uh, you have also a three battery charger and a few other accessories. Most of the people are tempted by the price of just the drone, which in most of the cases is below $500. And then they realize that it comes with too many limitations. You have limited range, it's about 100 meters. You have just a single battery. You have a relatively slow charger, etc., etc. And in time, if you decide to buy extra stuff, you're gonna end up paying more than what you could have paid for the Fly More Combo. So if you're going for the Spark, get the fly more combo I, I kind of distracted you from the main topic i wanted to say that when you buy the fly more combo it comes with a transmitter and the drone which are initially paired so the first thing i tried to do when i powered on my spark was to find its wi-fi well apparently both the drone and the transmitter are offering wi-fi connectivity and only one at a time can be active when the drone is paired to the transmitter, the only Wi-Fi you could connect to is the one that is assigned from the transmitter. So if you want to run just the drone over Wi-Fi with the DJI GO V4 app, you're going to have to enable the Wi-Fi over here. Well, it stays in the user guide, but well, it's, it's not very easy to find it. You've got to turn the drone on and then you have to depress this power button for about 10 seconds. You're going to hear one beep, then two beeps, and then in 10 seconds the Wi-Fi is going to restart and you would be able to detect it with your smartphone. If you're wondering where the SSID information is located, I'm showing you right away, it's over here. The second thing that took me quite a while to figure out is how to bind the remote controller. Well, I didn't know that it happens automatically. So indeed, that's a drone turned on and that's a transmitter. And you can see that little red LED 
which in just a few seconds is going to become static green. That means the transmitter and the drone are now binded. Well, probably it's because I'm coming from a lower end drones where you always have to turn the transmitter on, then make a magic spell with some of the sticks. Then you hear uh, one or two beeps and you know that they are binded. Nothing like that over here. Just turn them on, leave them and that should be binded. The third advice I have for you is in regard to the obstacle avoidance feature. Well, it's enabled by default and you can disable it from the settings in the application, but for safety reasons, I would say keep it there. It took me a while to get used to it. Sometimes when you're in a field with lots of grass and you try to land, I mean, takeoff is usually not a problem, but when you try to land, these optical avoidance sensors might detect that the grass is too high and you might be warned that you can't really land. You might be warned that there are obstacles around you. So there are two ways to do that. You, you either find a place where there's not too much of grass or you grab the drone, tilt it 90 degrees and the motors are going to shut down. <laughs> the next advice is about the fancy shooting modes. It took me a while to figure out which is the exact button. So here it is. Next advice is related to the gimbal. Yeah, I'll, I'll share part of my experience. Um, typically when you try to download pictures you have a few ways, uh, but probably the easiest one is just to connect a USB cable here to the USB connector and just download them on your computer. Well, uh, you have to carefully place the drone on a flat surface because sometimes if you leave it on a pillow like I did, it can block the gimbal and the drone is turned on during the whole time, meaning that the gimbal is trying to compensate uh, and fix the camera in a good position. And if it is stuck for a few minutes, it's going to overheat. And in some point, it could even damage the motors which are rotating the gimbal. So be extra gentle and extra careful and never leave the drone on a surface different than flat one. A quick advice for charging. That's the original DJI Spark battery. It operates at 11.4 volts. When I got the drone, I was hoping I'm gonna be able to charge it from my OnePlus power bank. Well, it didn't work. Most of the power banks are working at two amps, which is insufficient to power this battery. The original DJI Spark charger comes at three amps and there also are multiple power banks supporting three amps or uh, quick charge technology, which would enable you to possibly charge the battery. If you can't, then you need to find a step up converter. Why? Well, very simple. USB standard is operating at five volts while the DJI Spark's battery is 11.4. So you need a step up converter and I would recommend getting this one cheap, and that's going to help your power bank to charge your battery. Beware the capacity. That's 1,400 milliamp hours and that's a three cell battery, which means that your power bank has to be at least three times this capacity in able to successfully charge it until 100%. The seventh and last advice is in regard to range. That's probably one of the most controversial topics when it comes to the DJI Spark. I'll start with the theory. Well, there basically are two main standards for transmission. Those which are used inside the United States and those which are used outside the United States. So in the US, this transmitter can communicate with the drone uh, and it could be sending the signals with power of about 25 decibels. That's according to the FCC regulation. If you leave the United States, you might be compliant with the CE regulations, which downclocks this transmission to 18 decibels. That doesn't sound too much of a difference, but the numbers are quite shocking. Within the United States, you can control the drone and you can have FPV visibility for almost two kilometers, which is 1.5 miles approximately. In Europe, over here, we can have F FPV for up to 500 meters. And that's quite a limitation. Even if you go inside the forums or watch different YouTube videos, you're gonna find a lot of people complaining that their FPV disappears after 100 or 200 meters. And there are plenty of tutorials to overcome these limitations. Essentially, we have 
two main working ways of extending the range. In the first case, that's going to be a little bit. In the second one, well, you can count on the full distance, which is advertised by DJI. Option one is an OTG cable. The benefit of using this type of connectivity is that you reduce the impact and the noise that your smartphone's Wi-Fi uh, is pushing in the communication. The second option, which is not exactly legal, is to make your Spark think that it's within the United States, while it actually isn't. In GitHub, there is a place where you can find a tutorial of how to compile your own DJI Spark Go 4 app with FCC regulations enabled. Alternatively, you can download the already compiled app, but I can't really guarantee it's stable and it's totally safe. Once your drone operates according to the FCC regulations, you can push it to the limits and you can check Thanos and Panos's video where they made kind of a world record. They went close to 4.5 kilometers. Amazing. I'll stop with the ideas here. I hope that's enough for a starter and I hope that these little tips and tricks will be very helpful if you're beginners uh, and you're starting to learn how to operate your DJI Spark. I think I didn't mention the most important. How happy am I with it? Well, are you watching the Silicon Valley TV show? If yes, I'll just say it. This drone f I totally love it. Camera footage is phenomenal and the portability is amazing. If you have your own Spark, I'm gonna wish you happy flying. If not yet, well, I'll make sure to post as many videos as possible so that you can enjoy the beautiful scenes that this little camera flyer can shoot. I thank you very much for watching this video. Hope it was useful and hope to see you soon.